Our first story is titled, Am I the Hole for Evicting a Tenant Because They Got Pregnant? Yes, I know the title sounds awful, but please do hear me out before making a judgment. I will accept whatever judgment I'm given. A 30 male purchased a three-bedroom condo in Toronto, Canada five years ago when I was in my second year of medical residency. Soon after the purchase, I rented one of the rooms to my roommate, 29 female to offset the costs of the mortgage. I live in one room, she lives at a second, and the third is my study slash office. She has been a great roommate from the beginning. We aren't necessarily friends, as in we don't do things together for fun and we get along exceptionally well. The entire roommate slash tenant relationship has gone swimmingly up until recently. A couple of weeks ago, my roommate broke and used to me that she is pregnant. The father was a fling of hers who does not want anything to do with the child. My roommate has decided she wants to keep the child anyways and raise it on her own. To me that seems like a huge challenge. And I admire her for it. The issue is, well, I don't necessarily dislike children. I have no desire to live with a baby. While the condo is a fair size, I will most definitely be woken up by the babies crying at night. My condo is also where I like to come home to and relax, like a haven after a long work day. And the idea of coming home to Ababi honestly seems absolutely chaotic. Especially since this isn't my own child. That s one that my girlfriend and I decided to have slash was mentally prepared for. As difficult as it was for me to do this, I told her essentially that I've written here and that it would be best if she finds somewhere else to live. I am not rushing her out or anything like that. I have given her six months notice, since anything later than that will come to close due to birth. She was honestly quite taken aback by this, and thought that I was being cruel. Her primary concern is that rent has gone up substantially in the city since she signed on with me. I haven't increased her rent since she moved in, so she's essentially paying 2015 rent. She works as a waitress and will likely need to find a lesser apartment to keep within the same budget. A couple of other considerations are that she was out of work while restaurants were closed, but I did waive her rent for that period. All of the furniture is also mine, aside from her bedroom, so she would need to figure something out on that font as well, aside from all of the child expenses. I understand her position, and I feel horrible about the situation, but I honestly can't do it. Am I the whole for this? And a thank you. Everyone who has commented, there have been two great suggestions and how I can make the situation better, which I have taken to heart. I haven't been able to give life much thought lately, as work has been quite busy. Firstly, I have a friend in real estate, and I'm going to see if they can help her try to find some affordable listings. Secondly, as I don't plan to take on another tenant after her and can't afford to do this anyway, I have decided I'm going to waive her rent for the remainder of the tenancy. This will hopefully give her bit of a boost to get on her feet. Added to I'm just checking on this, for the first time today. My god I was not expecting anywhere near this mania. Replies thank you to everyone who has commented. I am about to head into surgery, but I will do my best get to get back to as many people as I can later today. That's the main story, and now for the top comments. Not the whole, it's your home. You are allowed to live with who you want to. She's an adult. She has six months to figure out a new living arrangement. Edit since some people were wondering why I said, not the hall, instead of another judgment. Opie has been nothing but generous and compassionate over this situation. They have even edited their post to offer their roommate additional support and kindness. But what gets me is that the roommate has called Opie cruel and acting put out. Opie doesn't deserve to be treated like that. It's not cruel to not want to live with a newborn, especially one that is not yours. It's a reasonable boundary to have when you are sharing space. Where else should Opie draw the line? Roommate has it a pretty sweet deal. No raise in rent. Payments waived when they were in financial crisis. And with Opie's edits, no rent in order to save money for moving out. And tapping into Opie's network for additional help in finding a new home. Roommate thinks all that isn't enough. Otherwise she wouldn't have accused Opie of being cruel. And that makes her the haul in my book. I'm actually surprised this is legal in Canada. I believe it's illegal in the US and EU to refuse to rent to someone because they have children. No a holes here. Neither one is a hole. Opie leased her room to a single person. As originally intended and now. The tenant is going to bring in another human being who will cry unseasonally and require a lot of attention. It is a tough situation. But Opie didn't sign for it to be a backup mama. A lot of space as well. In common areas to boot. That's more space she needs in the kitchen, 
the bathroom, etc. that you did not sign on for, and wasn't expecting since she wasn't in a relationship. No a holes here. It will always seem counterintuitive to not call someone the hole for evicting someone when they're pregnant. However, you're not exactly throwing her out on the street to give birth into gutter. You've been more than generous throughout her tenure by the sounds of it, and you've given her plenty of warning to move out. Her circumstances are changing through her own choices, and that will impact negatively on you. She may have hoped you'd be okay with it, but she should never have assumed. Our next story is an update to a post from a month ago. Update am I to a whole? And also my friends. We're not wanting to babysit our friend's child. Original story. I am just gonna get straight to it. This is about a group of friends, five people and one friend, expecting us to provide her with free childcare. We are all in our mid slash in 20s. Some of us go to university and work part time. Others have finished their education and work. A friend of said friend group, I will call her Lily, here got pregnant about three years ago. She was separated from the child's father when she found out she was pregnant, and it was clear to all of us, Lily included, that he would be a deadbeat, should Lily decide to keep the pregnancy going and get the baby. Since we are all pretty close, she discussed this with us. We are all women, by the way. All four of us said that the decision was solely Lily's. And we understand. Her situation sucks but also, all four of us were leaning towards determination with the following reasons. Lily had no stable income at that time. Her parents were supporting her financially and adding the burden of a child to that seemed unfair. The father would be a deadbeat, meaning she was going to be on her own with this kid. Lily loves her freedom. She has a very big fear of missing out. As a single mother in a group of five single young women, there would be many things she would have to miss out on. Well, she still decided to keep the pregnancy and gave birth to her baby little over two years ago. Since then, she has been miserable. But not only her. Our friendship is suffering and we are getting tired of her. The father is a deadbeat, as expected. She has now contact with Lily. She expects this baby to be all of our responsibility. She expects to drop the kid in one of us whenever she wants or needs to. She expects us to rotate with missing out on events so she can take part in some of them as if this kid was a common responsibility to all five of us and not just her. We specifically don't have kids because we want to live our lives and not take care of a child. Lily gets frustrated with us over this. She thinks as friends, we should take on this responsibility together. We think she was the one who decided to have this child. It was her decision and it's her responsibility. So guys are we the holes for not taking care of Lily's child equally? Edit if there are questions please ask. Didn't want to make this too long. Edit to Lily thinks we should step in. Because the father is a deadbeat and she should not have to do it on her own. And now for the update. First of all, I am sorry for taking so long to update, but it kind of took longer than I expected, and it was a process. I took your messages to heart. After posting here, I first talked to the other three, making sure we were all on the same page. We then arranged a meetup with Lily, and had a very long, very tough conversation. We were really honest with her. We told her we love her dearly, but her child was solely her responsibility. We are not and also do not want to be any sort of parents to her child. Here's what we discussed. We discussed what you guys suggested. No. One maybe she should try to make mom friends, so she has people who actually can relate to her, and also they can build some kind of babysitting schedule. No. To maybe she needs therapy. She still has not adjusted to being a mom, and it's about time. We also wanted to set some rules in place. No. 3. We won't miss any events to babysit her child unless there is an emergency, meaning somebody is injured or dead. No. 4. We are open to do child friendly activities sometimes, but not all of our meetings will be child friendly. Either she has a babysitter for that, who is none of us, or she has to miss some of our activities. No. 5. Our studies slash jobs are our main priorities. We won't sacrifice that because she has to be a mother. No. 6. We offered her one Saturday evening slash night of babysitting a month. The four of us would rotate, meaning every four months, it would be my turn, where she could do whatever she wants, and go wherever she wants for that time. In addition to that, we are willing to rotate babysitting her child while she is in therapy sessions, if she decided to go. It was a really long talk, and I am probably missing some things we all said. All of us cried a lot. We talked for a long time. Lily was very disappointed, and explained all the things we already knew. How she expected us to take on her child as if it was ours, 
All the things I already mentioned in my last post, but she said she needed to just let this sink in. I saw her pain that day, and all four of us felt really bad and sorry for her, but it was a weight off my chest I can't even explain. Lily has found a therapist and is looking forward to start therapy in October. I truly hope this helps her let go of some of the sadness and also learn to accept her situation as a single mother and that we can continue to be friends with her. Thank you guys for helping me out. And now for the top comments, why you guys handled this really well. Offering to babysit while she goes to therapy is great. I really like that. I'm glad it ended with resolution, if not happy for everyone. I'm still confused why she thought that she was having a group child, but it's good for her to work that out in therapy. Yes, this expectation seems absolutely delusional. I understand wanting to have an network of people who can be supportive, but basically looking for co-parenting from your peers is absolutely a bizarre expectation to have for people without a lot of prior discussion. She expected us to take on her child as if it was ours. It really wrinkles my brain why she would expect this. Maybe she was taking it takes a village too literally. I think that mentally would have been okay if Dopey and her friends were mothers in need of childcare because then it wouldn't be so one-sided. I hate that it takes a village saying. I get that it's meant as a kind of we all have a responsibility to look out for children kind of thing but I find it's always said by people who hand their kid over to anyone who will take them all the time or people who try to push parenting responsibilities onto people who aren't the parent. A kid doesn't want to be passed around a whole village. They need disability of their immediate family around them. They need that close bond with their primary parent for healthy development, especially young children. And that's the end of this video folks. As always comment, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.